We have set ourselves one of our hardest challenges yet for today's rebuild because we're going to be taking over at one of the worst, if not the worst performing side in the English Football League, trying to take them off the bottom of the table to promotion and hopefully win some trophies on the way. That's right, we'll be taking over a Sheffield Wednesday boss in FM24 trying to take this historic team to the Premier League. I say historic because they have got so much history. Four English top division titles, FA Cups and Carabao Cups, but things right now aren't going so well. The fans are calling for the owner to leave with the team in massive debt, but currently they sit right at the bottom of a Skybet Championship, 16 games played and only one win, making them one of the worst teams currently in terms of form in the top four English divisions. Arguably, there's Premier League teams with less points, but Sheffield Wednesday have played way more games than them, and it really doesn't look like things are going to change. And even though there are some decent players in this team, there's not much for the Hillsborough hopeful to get behind. Barry Bannon is our best player according to the game, 33-year-old Scottish midfielder. We've got a 30-year-old Chilean international by the name of Juan Delgado who plays on the right. He is our second best. And in terms of potential, the best we have is Anthony Masaba who is a 22-year-old Dutch under-21 international. But if an underperforming side and financial difficulties with a poor squad wasn't already an issue, most of this squad's contract is up at the end of the first season. The longest we've got anybody at the club is 2025, so a two-year contract. So our team is going to have to have a massive overhaul if we want to be successful. But that's going to be tough. We've only got 250000 pounds of transfer budget and 20k in the wage budget and our team is predicted to only narrowly escape relegation in terms of squad quality in this football manager world. So we've given ourselves five years as manager of this club to try and bring back the good feeling to Sheffield Wednesday. It's going to be a very very hard task but before we get started if you guys do enjoy the video please go ahead and smash that like button for me. It takes a few seconds, it's free to do. Scroll down, click it, forget you ever did it but it really does help me here on the channel in terms of promoting these videos out to as many people as possible and subscribe as well if you haven't already. If you enjoy this kind of content, we'll have weekly Football Manager rebuilds coming out and we are getting close to that 30,000 subscriber mark. I'm aiming for that by the start of a new year. So if you are watching in this percentage of people that haven't yet subscribed, I'd massively appreciate it if you click that button. Don't forget to let us know in the comments down below who you want to see rebuilt next. Down there in the description, you'll also find our Discord with over 700 members talking everything Football Manager. It's a great place to be if you enjoy the game. And the final thing, don't worry, down there you'll also find our Patreon Patreon where you can come over and support me as a creator. In return, you'll get access to the save files from these rebuilds that you can download and carry on yourself. But with that being said, I'm going to take a look around the club, try and do some transfer business with the minimal budget we've got and try and give ourselves a better chance for this coming season. We put our transfer budget into the wage budget and brought in two free transfers to try and help our team out. The first is Kosovan international Valon Barisha, who joins us from the French divisions on a free, paying him 12 grand a week and we're hoping he'll be one of our most important players this year. And we've also increased our depth at right back, again bringing in an experienced player, 32-year-old Kevin Mausiut here is a French right back who can also play wing back. Good ability, hasn't declined too much yet, coming in from the Turkish divisions on a free transfer with a contract of 11000 pounds a week. I'm looking to play a simple 4-3-3 Gagan pressing system and these are our best players currently, our best 11 to introduce you. It's Cameron Dawson in goal, a 28-year-old goalkeeper with Mausiot at right back who you've met. Liam Palmer is one of our best centre-backs at the age of 31 alongside a younger centre-back. His name is Akim Famuo. At left back we've got Reese James, not the Chelsea one. John Buckley is one of our best players with a lot of potential but unfortunately he's on loan from Blackburn so he's not really our player. George Byers is someone we'll be hoping can give us a a lot from midfield. The Scottish 27 year old has great ability and could be our big game player. Finishing off, we've got three players that you've met Barry Bannon, Juan Delgado, and Valon Barisha. And then up front, scoring the goals for us, fingers crossed, is Josh Windass, the 29 year old Englishman. He's been around the club for a while, helped the team get promoted into the championship, and hopefully he can help keep us there. And thankfully, with those incoming transfers, we've moved up very slightly in the season prediction to 20th place. And over the course of this rebuild, we'll be hoping to not only get this team promoted eventually, but but also sort out the club's financial situation whilst also upgrading the facilities because they are not in a good state, nor is our youth recruitment or academy coaching. So we need a lot of work, but let's see how we can do in our first season. Then we can really get stuck in to our own rebuild of this club.
Okay, it's been a very tough first year. Normally in these rebuilds, we get off to a great start. You know, we fly up, get promoted out of nowhere. It definitely hasn't been that for our Sheffield Wednesday team. Leicester won the title. Leeds got promoted with Blackburn, and you might see we're not even on this screen yet. That's because we finished all the way down in 18th. Now, mind you, that is better than the season prediction had us originally, and it is six points clear of the relegation zone with 12 wins and 12 draws in 46 matches. Far better than how the team is doing in real life, but it's not the best start, and we're definitely going to have to build from here. The FA Cup, we got to the fourth round, knocked out by Nottingham Forest, and we got knocked out of the Carabao Cup in the second round by Blackpool. Our best player this year was George Byers, who hit a seven average match rate in across the course of the season with six goals and four assists in the championship. Barry Bannon was also good for us, as was Masaba. Josh Windass, although he didn't play great across the course of the season, did get his 16 goals, which has definitely helped with our chances of survival. But other than that, there's not too much else to go off. I did find this player in our dev center, Jedi Gassama, who is a 20 year old French striker who was playing for PSG. Now even though we holiday I did ask the assistant towards the end of the season to start using him as often as possible and he did bag four goals in eight appearances so maybe he's someone that we can develop into at least a decent level striker and we might actually have to develop our own talent because we've only got £500,000 of transfer budget and we've got a negative wage budget going in to our second season so there's really not much we're going to be able to do in the transfer window although saying that you can see so many of our players contracts are expiring at the end of this year and we're going to be able to free up those funds to invest in some new players. Financially though there is £18 million in the overall balance. We're only getting 10% of transfer revenue from our sales which is not great of course but there's still over £100 million worth of debt so we need to keep working on that. So it's not much money but we're going to do what we can with it. Let's head into season two and make some transfers. Okay, brace yourselves. This is going to be a long one. Like I said, we lost over half our squads to end of contract deals and we had to reinvest and create a whole new team. So there's going to be a lot of players to get through here. Firstly, the sales. Bambo Diaby has left to join Derby County in the championship as well for 400k, which is a slight profit on what we paid to Preston for a guy that never really played for us. 32-year-old striker Michael Smith has left to join Salford in League One for just £60,000. And Paul Valentin, our Spanish right back, who is a good player, decided he wanted to leave the club and he is left to join a team in I think the third division or fourth division of Spain for 15,000 having signed for 100k it really wasn't the best deal one major free transfer to note is Josh Windass leaving the club to go and join Portsmouth they signed him on an end of contract deal so we need to replace his goals plenty of our other players are released apologies to Sheffield Wednesday fans if we've got rid of your favorite players here but based on how your team's doing I think you'll prefer what we've done here we've brought in Connor Coventry an Irish 24 year old on a free deal he left West Ham after three appearances last year in the Prem and hopefully he'll be a good option for us. Former wonder kid Karamoko Dembele has joined us on loan for the season. He was at Blackpool last year and didn't play, but he does have talent. He's coming in from Brest on loan in the French divisions, and I'm hoping he'll help us out on the wing. On the other wing, we've got Costa Rican Brandon Aguilera joining us on loan from Nottingham Forest. Again, how much he's going to play, I'm not sure, but he's a decent option to have. Omar Rekic is a permanent signing and one of the best we've made this summer. The Tunisian international is our new number four. At 22 years of age, he's going to be a strong centre-back option, formerly of Herfa formerly of Arsenal now he's playing for Sheffield Wednesday Sam Byron gives us an option at right back and left back whether he'll be a starter I'm not sure but he's definitely a player that's going to cover both areas well joining us on a free from Leeds Alfie Gilchrist is one I'm not expecting to go too well he's just been bought in from Chelsea on a free contract to be a squad player who hopefully might develop into something better our new goalkeeper is the Greek national Kostas Lampru formerly an under 21 international but he's now 32 having spent most of his career in the Netherlands actually all of his career. In fact, we've got him from Feyenoord after a few appearances for them last year. I feel like we've got a good quality keeper. Former Celtic centre-back Dedrick Boyata has joined the club with international experience for Belgium. Yes, he's way past his prime, but hopefully still a good option for our championship team. Bunasar gives us some cover at right back, and this is a player that was playing for Bayern Munich only a few years ago. Actually, that's where we got him from, who signed him for a big fee from Marseille. Not the player that they originally thought they'd signed, but he has still got some talent and hopefully can offer us something here in the second division. Just to add a bit of experience and depth to the team, we've bought in Danny Rose as well. Only £1,400 a week for the left-back option. One of our best signings this summer, though, is Chadira Ejuke, our new number nine. He's a Nigerian international at the age of 26 who can play on either wing. He comes in with great ability, great pace and acceleration. He's been playing all across Europe and now is getting his first crack in the English leagues. Nearly there, don't worry, but we've bought in Kenan Yildiz on loan from Juventus. He is a attacking midfield option who can play on the left or up front. Australian wonder kid 
David Granqual is playing for Newcastle but never really got a crack so he's been loaned to us after a year out for FC Volendam in the Eredivisie last season. There was a lot of promise of this guy when he was at Chelsea. His career hasn't gone quite the way that you would expect it but Lewis Baker is still a very big talent. At the age of 29 he's got a lot of ability. He's been around the block in English football spending a lot of time at Stoke in his recent career and hopefully even though his physical attributes are very weak he's still got the technical attributes to help this side. And our final transfer is Oliver Kemen, a Cameroonian international who's now 28 is going to offer us an option in a box-to-box -box ball winning midfielder role in our midfield and hopefully he'll do great for us. So with all of those players gone through our team has had a complete overhaul and we're still going to have to have another one next summer because again a lot of these players all of these guys upwards are either leaving us at the end of their loans at the end of this season or their contracts are expiring. So there's a lot of work still to be done. This is what our best 11 currently looks like with Lamprou coming in in goal, Bunasar, Boyata, Themowo, Rhys James, Barry Bannon, Barisha, Kemen, Dembele, Ejuke and Garan Kual, who's coming in to be our striker this year in replacement of Josh Windass. Even though he is a wide player, he can also play up front. Now this team is going to take a long time to gel together with so many new players, but we're predicted to come, drum roll, in 20th place, so exactly where we were last season. So things haven't quite got better for us, but we're making this team our own over some time and hopefully some of these players will do well for us. We can resell them on and start creating a squad with a bit more quality to it over time. But our team is ready to go for season two. Let's see what we can deliver with our new look team. And we've exceeded all media expectations at the start of this year. We haven't quite got promoted. In fact, we're nowhere near really the playoff spots, but we have finished in 10th place with 69 points, way better than previous years, winning 21 games, losing 19 and drawing six. So we've actually won more games than we've lost this season, finishing above a lot of teams I would consider far better than us. Knocked out by Newcastle in the fourth round of the FA Cup and the third round also by Newcastle in the Carabao Cup. But this is something that we can definitely build off a much better year for our team and hopefully that's helped us out financially. Well, not quite. Next summer, we've been given less than we had last year with only 130k of transfer budget and five grand of wage budget, but a lot of people will be leaving us at the end of this season, at the end of their deal. But the good news is financially, our balance has remained about the same, but we have knocked away a lot of the debt that the club had, now down to 50 million pounds. We're starting to clear that, which will help us financially a lot going forward. And I think the reason a lot of that debt is cleared is because we have a new owner, the one that's currently in charge, Chan Sincerely, a lot of the Sheffield Wednesday fans want him out. In this world, Karol Pobrowski here, he attempted to take us over in July. It didn't work, but he wanted the club and he came back in December. He's not exactly pouring money into the club, but hopefully it's some stability that we can begin to work with here at Hillsborough. And it's some of our new signings that we can really thank for a great season. Karamoko Dembele getting 12 goals on loan. He's been a very beneficial loan to us. Gran Qual was the same, scoring 17 on loan. Valon Barisha got 19 goals from midfield, turning in to a great signing on a free contract. A Juke hit 11. Lewis Baker chipped in with five goals. Kemen chipped in with six. Connor Coventry getting five goals as well. We're getting goals from all around the pitch and that has definitely helped us this year. Barry Bannon also getting six, but he is leaving at the end of his contract. He's a veteran midfielder who's been with us for so long and I'm sure he's a fan favourite, but unfortunately his legs are gone, as you can see, 35, and it's time to let him go. And I imagine that'll be the case for a lot of our squad. Danny Rose, Boyata, Barry Bannon, Malik Wilkes, among many others others, all their contracts are expiring. So again, it's going to be a real overhaul of a summer. So let's see what we can do with the limited budget we've got. Hopefully this time we can create a team that can push further than 10th and maybe hit a playoff spot. Before we get into the transfers for this season, don't forget if you are enjoying the video, smash the like button for me, hit the subscribe button. Don't worry, I won't ask again, but if you can do that, be a massive help. So thank you. Let's get back to the transfers. First though, let's get into the only sale that actually earned us any money. Bunasar has left to join Al Qadzia in the Saudi Arabian divisions for a small fee of 155k. Had a good season for us, but again, his legs are gone. He's 33 and we'll take any money we can get at this point. And let's get into the incomings where we have signed some championship level stars in my opinion. Opinion. Not stars in world football, but for the championship, are going to do very well for us. Firstly, it's our striker who won't be here long because he's only 32, maybe for the next couple of years or so. It's Florin Andon, who is a Romanian international with two goals and 27 appearances for them. It doesn't sound great, but he has been scoring in the second division. He's played for the likes of Brighton, Villarreal in the past, and hopefully he'll score goals for us here in the championship. Some more recognisable names coming in now. Faustino Angerin, who, if you don't know, was one of Chelsea's best wonder kids, best academy products of the last five 
five years or so, hasn't quite worked out in his career after a few injuries. And in this football manager world, he was let go on a free, but he's been to Portsmouth and Huddersfield in the championship. He's used to English football and hopefully we'll get the best out of him. Now representing Nigeria, the 23 year old has great ability all around with lots of potential. You can see he's got the potential to be the best player in this team if he can just get past those horrible injury problems. Mason Holgate gives us some experience in our back line. The former England under 21 international is now 28, has been let go by Everton, been to Southampton on loan in the championship and did very well there. So hopefully a very good championship level player. Miguel Aziz is a young 22 year old. Him and Andrin feel like the first time we've signed players that we could definitely sell on for huge profit. The Nigerian international has lots of potential. His club was Arsenal. They've let him go on a free because clearly he's never going to be good enough for them. But for us, he could be a star with some development. Speaking of star players, we've got Luton Town's Peli Rudolf Kampanzu, who of course had the great story in real life of being the man who went all the way from the National League to the Premier League with Luton. After they got to the Premier League, it looks like they let him go here to the Congolese divisions of all places. He's done pretty well and we've signed him there on a free contract. Not really sure how it's all worked, but Peli Rudolf Kampanzu is here as a great option in the midfield for us. Josh Wilson Esbrand has joined us on loan from Manchester City. If you don't know in these saves, we can only sign players that our scouts recommend. I can't use my own knowledge. However, when we signed him, I was very happy because a couple years ago, we did an Aberdeen save on FM23 it was, in fact. And Wilson S. Brand was a great level left back and hopefully he can do good for us this year in the championship. A few more loans to finish off. We've got the Bulgarian 21-year-old Marin Petkov playing for AC Milan with 24 international appearances and five goals at that age. He's a very promising talent with great ability straight away. Another Bulgarian, Nikola Ilyev, joining from the other side of Milan from Inter. Again, another one with international experience and great ability from the off. And then we've got a centre-back on loan. Again, it's from Manchester City. It's Luke Mbete here, a Congolese centre-back who's going to be a squad player at most, I would have thought, but could potentially step in to that first team when needed. I am thinking about potentially changing the tactic to be a little more aggressive, attacking, maybe moving away from a defensive midfielder and going for an attacking midfielder. With the players we've got, like Andrin and also Nikola Ilyev coming in, I feel like we've got a lot more attacking talent. We've got a lot more to offer. We've got plenty of players with great ability here in our best 11. You can see this team is absolutely stacked. And the game's now predicting as 18th place, which is way better than before, but it's still nowhere near where I'd like to be. But I think based on the fact we finished 10th last year with the squad we've had, I feel like we've massively upgraded and we could definitely push for a playoff spot. So let's see how we can do with this team in season three. And this has definitely been one of our hardest rebuild challenges yet. We've still got two years to go, but we have somehow made it into the Premier League. I really thought we'd be in the Championship for at least another year. I thought we could make the playoffs. We did exactly that, and we beat Stoke 4-3 in the playoff final to get promoted. Let's take a look where we finished. It was sixth place, so very lucky, really. Saying that, we are a pretty big distance away from Leicester, four points, who are our chasers in seventh. We were close to Stoke, only a win or two away from Middlesbrough and Luton above us in the playoff matches. That means we would have had to have played Luton in these games here. Let's have a look. Yes, we beat them 3 2 at home with Ilyev and Petkov, the two loanees, getting the goals. We then went to their stadium. Ross Barkley scored, but Andon got a goal for us to take us in to that playoff final where it was 4 3. Andon, an own goal, Luke and Bete on loan, and then a Juke scoring in the 89th minute to deliver promotion to the Sheffield Wednesday faithful. Let's take a look at that game. Why not? We've got to check the goals out, right? A playoff final. We don't normally get promoted in that fashion in these kind of videos. It's not often in the rebuilds. We drop to the second division, but this has been so much fun to try and take this team into the Prem. Here's the first goal. Petkov lays it off from a free kick. It finds Andon, who opens a scoring after only two minutes with a great finish at the near post there. Two minutes in, gave us the advantage, but Stoke weren't going to lie down easy. They finished fifth in the table, so only one place above us, but they did equalise through Wesley Morales there in the 13th minute to make it 1-1. Then we're going to go, looks like 2-1 Stoke here. If I remember right, that was correct. Here's Diata on the left-hand side, only a couple minutes later, pulling it in and then scoring from close range. 16 minutes gone, we've had a lead and we've lost it. We're 2-1 down. I'm sure at that point, heads were dropping. And then we have, is this a goal for us or a goal for them? Um, that is one of the craziest own goals I've ever scored. Hold on, what, what just happened there? Did he just boot it in? Feel free to rewind that. I feel like the Stoke player just turned around and gave us a goal out of nothing. No idea what happened, but they then went up 3-2. We then have a corner and how do we score? We knock in from, oh, it's an absolute shambles, but we make it 3-3 in the 76th minute. And then in the 88th, it was a Juke on the left-hand side who it said scored. 
let's see, he cuts in on his right foot and it's a brilliant shot. A brilliant shot to win the game. 88th minute, send the Sheffield United fans into absolute raptures and we are now heading to the Premier League. You'll see we've upgraded the stadium's capacity. I believe it was 29,000 before. It's now 39,000. I could be completely wrong in that, but I believe that has gone up. But we have upgraded our youth facilities. We've upgraded our youth level, our academy coaching and youth recruitment. So things are definitely looking up. And of course they are because we're heading to the Premier League. Now financially, we've got 76 million pounds of debt. So that's actually gone up a little bit, but it's not the worst thing in the world because it has delivered us to the Premier League. We've got £22 million to spend next summer and 70 grand in the wage budget. And we have a Juke, Andrin, Ilyev and Petkov to thank for our promotion as well as Andon as well. 22 goals from him, 20 goals from Ilyev, 20 goals from Andrin, 20 goals from a Juke. So many players chipping in with so many goals across all competitions. That's not to count the old five that Mpanzu's delivering, six from Musaba who's been here from the start but is now leaving at the end of his contract and Olivia Kemen as well getting six from midfield playing pretty much every game this season when he could. I really did think we'd need another year before we got promoted but we're heading to the Premier League with a side that is nowhere near good enough to stay up yet. Two of our best players being loan players. We really need to figure something out in the season four transfer window to make sure we can somehow survive in the Prem. Okay, so I'm about to show you the transfers for season four. You might see the date says we're at the end of the season four season. That's because I forgot to record the part where I told you who I signed. So we're going to try and move through it quite quickly and tell you who we bought in. Firstly, the sales. Connor Coventry has gone to Darmstadt for just under £400,000. After a great year in the championship, we had Saudi Arabian side Ariad coming for Florin and Don, and we couldn't reject £3 million for a 34-year-old. Saudi Arabian side Al Weda have signed Mason Holgate for just under six mil. I didn't want to sell him but they activated his release clause and it was a similar case for Jadira Ajuke one of the best players we had if not the best player last season brilliant in the championship he went to join Hoffenheim for 12 million doesn't look like it's gone well for him but he was another release clause fee so with those sales and the decent transfer budget we had you'd think we'd be able to bring in a good chunk of players for our Premier League side and we did bring in a lot of players but maybe not the right quality we had a few issues firstly players didn't want to join because our squad wasn't good enough but how could our squad be good enough if we couldn't sign those players and the second part is the board weren't really willing to give us anything in the wage budget. So I tried to adjust most of the transfer budget into wage budget, but I wasn't allowed to do so. The board had set a cap at £650,000 a week of wage budget, which is nothing really for a Premier League side, meaning we could sign players with a transfer fee, but not offer them any kind of contract because there was nothing left in the wage budget. So it was a really weird summer. It was hard to get a decent caliber of player for our team, but here's who we went for. Firstly, Callum Ramsey joined us on loan at right back from Liverpool. We then got 24-year-old centre-back Charlie Cresswell on loan for Leeds. Deemed not good enough for Leeds. I was hoping he would be good enough for us. Young Bulgarian Nikola Ilyev was brilliant in the championships. So we decided to sign him on a free transfer at the end of his contract. Liam Delap was bought in on a free and I really wasn't expecting too much from him. A former Manchester City striker came in as basically our backup option. And that was because we'd signed Jean-Philippe Mateta from Crystal Palace. This man had, you know, a lot of physical ability. Maybe isn't the world's best forward, but I thought he'd be very good for us in the Premier League in our first year there to try and help keep us up. We bought in Owen Evans to be our backup goalie. Maybe a silly signing because of his physical attributes but I decided to bring in some Premier League experience signing Wilfred Zaha on a free contract. Dylan Williams is a versatile left-sided player who we've signed on a free after his contract expired with Chelsea and Premier League experience centre-back Ben Gibson joined us on a free contract as well and actually came in as one of our best defenders. His physical attributes have declined a lot over the last year but he's still got something in the tank in terms of that defence element to his game. And Alan Medina also joined us on a free contract, one of the more higher quality players that we bought in on a free. He hasn't got much ability according to the star ratings, but attribute wise is a very handy player. And the final free transfer was Marcus Lopez, a Peruvian left back with plenty of international experience. He comes in as a great option and he was one of the few that I was actually pretty happy with. We got a bargain on Billy Gilmore though, signing him for only £600,000 on a transfer list from Brighton and he comes in as one of our best players in the whole team. Former a Burnley player and former under 21 Belgian international now 25 years of age Killian Sardella joined us for just under two million pounds he's a right back option who can also play centre back and gave us that extra bit of depth Brian Cortez came in as our first choice goalkeeper the former Colo Colo keeper was bought by Chelsea in this save and sold a season later on the transfer list for just over two million pounds and I think he's a massive upgrade in the net for us and then our biggest signing of the window and our final one was Martin Vitek who joined for just under seven million the 
Czech international has 12 international appearances at the age of 24 and comes in as one of our best centre back options at six foot four. He's a big physical presence to help build the back line, particularly when you're a team threatened with relegation. We were hoping someone like that would really help us out. Even with all those signings, though, we were 1,000 to one to win the league. Predicted 20th place, absolutely rock bottom. The team closest to us was our rival Sheffield United with 600 to one odds of winning the title. So we really weren't expecting much going in to this season, and I figured if we could stay up, that would be a big win. So now let's show you how we did. And it was an absolutely massive result for our Wednesday side because somehow, not only did we stay up in the Premier League, we stayed up by a huge margin, finishing on 42 points, 11 points higher than Brentford. And to add that little cherry on top of the cake, Sheffield United did get relegated too. We won 11 matches, including a 4-2 away win at Old Trafford against Man United, nine draws against some decent sides. We basically beat the teams you'd expect us to have a chance against. All the other big teams absolutely smashed us. The style of football we play, we do try and be quite attacking and score a lot of goals. So the big teams really sussed us out. But 42 points, certainly not bad at all. Way away from relegation. Predicted 20th. We have finished 14th. And that'll go down by the Wednesday board and the Wednesday fans as an unbelievable season. The Cups, there was nothing to really shout home about. But it's been a great year and something we can definitely get behind and build on in the coming season. Because we've been given £49 million, 36 grand in the wage budget. And actually, if we move this across, our wage budget is allowed to go so much higher than before. The cap is a lot less than it was last season and now we can really spend some money and bring in some top quality players for our team. Speaking of top quality players though, we've got plenty in our first 11 with Liam Delap getting 20 goals for us over the course of the season. A very unexpected turn of events from him. Meanwhile, Mateta, who I thought would score a lot, only scored eight goals. Delap started most of the games and did great. Gilmore was good as well. Andrin still being brilliant. We bought him a couple years ago for free and he's continued to be very good good getting 15 goals in the Premier League at the age of 25 with no real experience in that league before is no mean feat we've also got goals coming in from Iliev, Medina, Cresswell, Kemen and Miguel Aziz amongst a few others as well Zaha even chipping in with six goals even at the age of 34 so it's been a fantastic year for us and hopefully we can build off it in our fifth and final season with some money to spend let's see who we can bring in to really shore up this Premier League team. Here we go then, our final season of transfers. Only one major sale. A man that's been with us for so long was a great servant, but his time was up at the club with only one year left on his contract. It's Omar Rekic. He's been playing loads for Tunisia as well. His career's going great and he's found himself going to Saudi for 2.6 million to join Al Riyadh. After last season, he didn't play too much in the Prem. So well wishes to him, but we have signed some better players for our first team now. So let's move through them quick. Firstly, Calvin Ramsey was great on loan for his last season. Liverpool let him go on a free, so we thought to reward him, we've got to bring him to the club and give him a permanent chance here. In the other fullback spot, we've got Chelsea's Ian Matson let go at the age of 25, having been great for Burnley in real life in the championship, went to Chelsea, played a few times, went to the championship again, came back to Chelsea, back to the championship, let go, and we've swooped in and picked him up as a free agent for our team. The free agents kept coming though. We have signed 31-year-old Brazilian Tormena, who is a great ability player and looks brilliant right from the off, an experienced centre-back at six foot four as well. That is great. But the thing I love about him, we had a look at his recent performances for four seasons for Krasnodar out in Russia. He was beyond exceptional, probably operating as one of the best centre-backs in the world in terms of ability in-game. Getting a 7.91 on average match rating is insane. So we're very happy to have him at the club now. Filip Krastev, a Bulgarian international with 40 appearances, six goals at the age of 25 for the international team has joined us from the Belgian divisions from Lommel, having been let go from there after some great seasons for them. Also playing for LAFC in the MLS at one point. But yeah, a great ability player, comes in as one of our best midfielders. At the age of 25, plenty of years to get better. Heading into his prime, we'll either sell him on for huge profits in the future or he'll become one of our best because I think he is an absolute star with those attributes. And our final free transfer, Charlie Cresswell. So good for his last year on loan. Didn't expect much for him from Leeds, but he played 27 times and was very consistent at the back. They let him go for free. So you know what? We bought him in as well. We have a new goalkeeper and a very good one. We have the eccentric Ecuadorian international starting keeper, 26 years of age. It's Moises Ramirez who joins us from Independiente del Valle in the Ecuadorian divisions where he's been exceptional for the last five or six years. 1.7 million is nothing for a keeper of this ability. Maybe not the best in terms of his first touch handling, 
running and kicking and his communication as well, but great aerial reach, eccentric, good passing, one-on-one -on -one ability and reflexes with some brilliant physical attributes. I think he could really suit our team. Simon Adingra was signed on an absolute bargain fee, 25-year-old Ivorian international, 2.9 million. You can see why they would transfer list him for such a fee because he never really made it at Brighton, then went on loan and didn't play at all for FC Copenhagen. So they just wanted out. But for us, that's a good fee for a player that maybe won't be Premier League quality, but there's at least some good squad depth for the club. The first time we've really signed a player from a fairly elite club is Joe Scally joining us from Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Bundesliga for 7.5 mil. Was a consistent starter there, had no reason to leave, but we wanted him and we poached him to come play in the Prem. The American international was saw what we did last season and wants to be a part of it. So he's joined us as a right back. Then we've signed two wingers. Firstly, Manchester United's former player, Anthony Alanga, who's been playing for Forest in this save. It looks like they didn't want him though. Ange Postacoglu decided to let him go after some good seasons. His most recent season was his weakest. We paid 8.75 million for the Swedish international and hopefully he'll come good for us. Maybe our most recognisable player now though is our new number six on the right wing. It's Noni Madueke, who I'm sure will be the player on the thumbnail, being the most recognisable that we've signed so far. 25 years of age, former England under 21 international, played for Chelsea of course, played quite a lot for them in the first few years then stopped playing at all and he was transfer listed for 10 and a half million and I think we're the beneficiaries of that with a great player with potential to get better if he can get past his injury problems and also the fact that he's not good in big matches I think Madueke could be a great player for us. So there's our best 11. The defence maybe isn't the strongest but the midfield and attack I think is actually Premier League quality relegation level Premier League quality mind you but good enough to have a chance to survive in the Prem. I think we've assembled such a good team here. Plenty of young talents. Ones that maybe didn't make it at their former clubs that now hopefully will make it with us. If we have a look at the season preview, we're in 19th, so still nowhere near where we want to be, but we aren't in 20th anymore, which is slow progress, and they're discounting the feel-good factor that we have here at Wednesday. Last year, we finished 14th. We've got a great squad, players that get on well together, the dynamics are good as well, and they'll only get better with a few wins. So if we can build on that, I think we can perform way better than the game expects us to. So we're ready to go for our last season. You can see the facilities, the recruitment, the academy coaching is all on the up. We've got some good young prospects coming through from the academy as well. Here is one of them by the looks of it. But yes, I think we've done such a good job in this rebuild. Let's see how he can do in our fifth and final season with Wednesday. And you know what? It hasn't got the bells and whistles of other rebuilds. We haven't won the Champions League. We haven't got a Europa League spot, won an FA Cup, Carabao Cup. We didn't even get a Conference League spot. But this rebuild might go down as one of my best achievements yet because despite everything, we have finished in 12th place with this Wednesday side, winning 14 games across the course of the season, losing 19 and drawing five, including draws against Chelsea, Newcastle and Man U. The Cups, we got to the fifth round of the FA, knocked out by Man City. Second round of the Carabao Cup to Leicester. Let's forget about that. But it's a better year than we had last year, even if it's only a slight improvement and we are miles off relegation, which is 23 points, we had 47. And even though we were way off Manchester United in eighth place for that conference league, we're actually closer to them than we were to the relegation zone, if my maths is correct. Or maybe it's pretty much even. Either way though, we have done a very good job here as Wednesday manager. 12th place, I'm sure Sheffield Wednesday fans will be delighted with in real life. You can see we've continued to upgrade the facilities. The capacity is at 39,000. We're a rich club with a big reputation. It's only getting bigger and that's going to allow us to attract more players to the team now. Financially, we've got 87 million in the balance. There is no debts and loans. And next season, if you want to continue this rebuild from the Patreon, linked in the description, you will have 63 million pounds to spend and a decent chunk of wage budget. If you move that around, you'll have plenty of money there, as you can see, to sign some new players. And if we have a look at our best performers of the season, we've got Krastev coming in with 10 goals, Andrew in with 10. Ramirez in goal is also very good for us. Tormena was good. Liam Delap not playing as well, but scoring 90 goals. Madueke only played six times for us across the course of the season. I believe he must have had an injury issue. Oh, surely he would have played more than that. But either way, let's forget about the individual performances. Overall, we've done very well. The team is on the up and that concludes our Sheffield Wednesday rebuild. Currently bottom of a championship. We have got them mid-table and we've erased all of their financial difficulties as well. Make sure you comment down below which rebuild you want to see next and we'll get on it for next week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.